Welcome to Houston, Texas and Minute Maid Park. The show brings you Major League Baseball on a Saturday night. It's the Chicago White Sox taking on the Houston Astros. First pitch coming your way next. Hand hitter waits. He dives, but he can't make the catch. And he beats it. That's a hit. Great try there. Luis Robert now. Kicks and fires. outside and that's ball two Lopez gets his lead at first with nobody out oh. swings and misses struck him out well when you commit to throwing an inside fastball to your glove side across the strike zone especially with two strikes if you're going to miss you want to miss off the plate in. you do not want to leave it out over the heart of the plate so that was excellent execution on that pitch. Really tied him up, and he couldn't get a piece at all. Andrew Benintendi up to the plate. And that's outside. The pitch. That one misses. And the count is three and one. Swing and a miss. Instead of letting the hitter get his arms extended, tied him up a little bit, slightly up, slightly in. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. Well, interesting. He's looking very comfortable out of the stretch after giving up the leadoff single. Back-to-back -back strikeouts, so they haven't been able to move that runner up, get him in the scoring position, and try to have a better chance of scoring. I tell you, good job so far on the mound. He just needs one more out. Two gone, but the go-ahead run is at first. And we're just getting started here in the top of the first. Step off throw to first. And he's out. And they got him. That ends the inning. On to the bottom of the first. No score. towing the slab number 65 and singing we were talking earlier about how he's doing a great job navigating through tough spots I've just been so impressed with when it seems like there's more pressure he's more calm and settles in he's done an incredible job with runners in scoring position most guys they get a little tight they start to aim the baseball but for some reason he gets looser the ball comes out of his hand with more life and he's able to wiggle off the hook of you know, tough situations and get his team back in the dugout. Ball and two. another ball. Two ball, one strike. Up the middle. Fires to first on the run. On target. He got him. Nice play. Now we check out the Astros lineup. In that cleanup spot, a key piece for this club, Gaynor Diaz. Yeah, definitely someone I always enjoy, you know, when I get a chance to watch him, whether he's hitting a game or even taking swings during batting practice. Man, this guy is always so focused on what he's doing on that task at hand. He's got so much attention to detail that when he steps in the box, his success rate is really high. Fouled 
fights it off you'll see another Oh, and that dude. one missing yeah. low. It's a good take. One down, base is empty. Oh, Just down. misses the mark outside the zone. Close pitch there, and he's kind of wondering where it missed. You know, getting a feel for each umpire's strike zone is something that pitchers and hitters really have to think about and work on from game to game and sometimes from at bat to at bat. Foul ball and it remains a full count. A little early on that fastball. I'm sure the pitcher taking a note. Look for an off-speed pitch on this next one. Righty to the plate. Swings through it and that's a strikeout. Well, oh, that's a curveball that I'm sure he wants back at the that plate. Is. Two strikes, that's sort of pitch you're hoping for. A bit of a mistake and... I'd say in a very hittable location, but clearly the break was enough to get him to swing through it. Two outs, base is empty. Next is the designated hitter, your Don Alvarez. Swing and a miss. One, two. Two outs, space is empty. And this is inside. Two down, nobody on. Got him swinging. He chased the changeup, and the Astros put down in order. Astros are down quietly. Scoreless after one. Back here in Houston, leading off Andrew Vaughn. Taken high in the draft, he's had that top prospect label over him since he put on a professional uniform. But at some point, that starts to go away, and you've got to produce at the big league level. Inside, almost got him. Two and one the count now. He hasn't seen a fastball yet, but you've got to be ready to hit one because you doubt the pitcher wants this to go to a 3-1 count. Next oh. offering is in for a strike. Joe McDonald doing the home plate duties here. Well, Joe is an interesting one. I'm always trying to figure out what exactly his zone is. It feels like he kind of moves around from game to game, sometimes inning to inning. Just off the inside edge. Yeah, I think that's fair. I don't think he's ever way off with his balls and strikes, but yeah, I don't think it's easy to define what his zone is, like you said. And so the lefty allows the leadoff free pass. Now a great back and forth and that at bat. He had to play off some really close pitches, and somehow, Boogie, found a way to keep the bat on his shoulder right there. I'll tell you right now, I couldn't have done it. Now with the plate, Gavin Sheets. Automatic double now as it hops the wall in foul ground. Off the bat, I thought they were going to score their first run of the game, and that feels like a tough break, but look at the bright side. Really good contact at the plate, and now they're working with not just one, but two runners in scoring position, so they'd love another base hit right here. Miguel Vargas steps to the plate for the White Sox. The 1-1. One -one. Vaughn, the runner at third. Sheets stands at second. No outs. Base hit. One run is in. Headed for the plate. Not in time. He's safe. And they take a two-run lead. Well, a swing like that can help you come out of the struggle. We saw the numbers coming into the ball game. But all he's trying to do at this point is help his team win. No outs, runner at first. Dominic Fletcher now at the plate. Swings through that one for strike two. One ball, two strikes. Nobody out, runner at first. Struck him out 
looking. Well, just excellent location on that inside fastball. Really locked him up. And it's a hitter. It's not typically what you're looking for. You're trying to protect away and then in. So you can be a little bit tardy with two strikes. Hard to tell if he was fooled or if he thought it would be called the ball. But either way, that's a really nice pitch. And now, number 47. Next offering is downstairs. Step off, throw to first, and he dives back in safely. Two runs across in the inning here at the top of the second. Out of line, out towards center. Myers makes the catch, and there's two down. And up next for Chicago, Brooks Baldwin. The one two. Cuts on it and misses. That's a strikeout. Gassed it right by him. So it's two runs on two hits, no errors, and a runner left. Now to the bottom of the second. It's the White Sox two and the Astros nothing. We head to the bottom of the second, and here now is the Astros cleanup hitter, Gaynor Diaz. Fouled off down the right side. Well, after putting up a nice inning on offense, got some runs across, this is where you look for the starter to go out there, have a shutdown inning. Don't give that other team any hope. Uh, you just hope that he can get through this inning, get the bats back up there while they're hot. Got him. Looks like he's picked up right where he left off. Jeremy Pena up next for the Astros. One down, base is empty. That one to first, and it stays fair. That is good. The first base man. One gone runner at first. Zach DiZenzo up next for the Astros. Pena stands at first with one out. That one off the bad part of the bat, just a lazy fly ball. Got it! Really had to move for that grab. Out number two. And now the center fielder, Jake Myers. Singy, you got to appreciate a guy who's this good defensively. I mean, watching him track balls in the outfield, it is beautiful. Yeah, right. big swing and a miss. And I would say that most great defensive outfielders, it's kind of natural. There is some work that you can do to it. Uh, to improve your game, but ultimately, you either have it or you don't. And that is that. One left for Houston. They trail it here, 2 nothing. Back here in Nicky Houston, Nicky Lopez up the to the plate. Nicky. There's one guy that I can think about, Boog, who started as a third baseman, Alex Gordon, and then became an elite perennial gold glover out in left field for the Kansas City Royals. But he's a guy, when you watch him play, you would imagine that that's all he ever played in his life was the outfield. Couldn't have timed it up any better than that. Timing on the swing was good, able to shoot the ball up the middle. Didn't square it up as much as he probably would have liked, but that's a good approach paying off. Runner takes off, swing and a miss. Safe at second with a stolen base. Well, with that kind of elite arm he has behind the plate, man, it's a pretty big deal when you can swipe a bag against this dude. Maybe more than anything, it prevents teams from just testing him, thinking that they can even steal the base. But right here, they successfully moved that runner up to scoring position. Good job. Man, it's second. 
Waves him to Bender for the strikeout. Well, that's a curveball that people like to describe as a hammer or Uncle Charlie, and you can see why. It's not a looping slow curve. He throws it hard, and it gets plenty of bite on the end. Now it's Andrew Benintendi to hit. And a pitch. Right through there for a strike. Well, Chris, through the early stages, he hasn't been very efficient in terms of the pitch count. He's going to need to get some quick outs if he's going to get deeper into this game. Hits and misses. It's a strikeout. Came inside with that two-strike fastball nicely and just bunched him up on the inside part of the plate. Couldn't get around on it and catch it out front. Many times if you do, it's a foul ball. And you know a lot of pitchers, they really don't like working inside with two strikes because they do not want to hit that batter. And when they've got him up against the ropes, got to figure out a way to put him away. Did a nice job right there. Next offering in there for a strike. Going to count one and two. It is interesting, though, when you consider the way the game is run now, doesn't even matter that much if your starter doesn't go that deep because teams are really aggressively building their bullpens. And a curve misses outside. Runner at second, two down. Liner, base hit. Lopez, rounds third, headed for the plate. Well done, drives in the run. I could watch base hits like that one all day long, and so could every hitting coach in the league. Just a nice line drive into center field. Next to hit for the Sox, Gavin Sheets. Two outs. Oh, and down on strikes. Picks up strikeout number seven. So one run in the inning on this base hit. It's now 3-0. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. Step for the bottom of the third, and stepping in for the Astros, Mauricio Dubon. Mauricio Dubon. Up and in, and it's two and one. Dubon, one strike. Started to go after it. Now a look down to first, and that's going to be ruled a swing. Two two now. Out to short. Lopez sends it across That's the first. Out. One up, one down. Batting none. The left fielder. Chaz McCormick. Chaz McCormick up next for the Astros. And a base hit right there. So that will bring up the top of the order with one away. Well, when you fall behind in the count, you've got to come into the zone, and then guys have a better chance of hitting the ball hard like you did right there. So the lineup flips over. Here's the former MVP, Jose Altuve. Altuve always seems to be setting records or reaching milestones, Boog. In 2023... He became the fastest player to reach 2,000 career hits, 200 home runs, and 200 stolen bases in MLB history. One and two now. Altuve waits. That's down. And that just misses. Really good take, especially with two strikes. The Strohs trailing by three here in the last half of the third. Knocks that one away, and we'll do it again. Two-two now. That's hard hit on the line. And puts the squeeze on that one. And there's two down. It was all over that fastball right there. I tell you what, if he gets under it just by a fraction of an inch or a little bit more, that's way back. Man at first. And now it's Alex Bregman. Fastball for a strike.
That's, That's inside. Ball. Great RBI spot Good here. Down. Just got to stay focused on the pitch. The runner will be in motion, so something in the gap should definitely score it. Your Don Alvarez. Hoping for a chance, he would represent the tying run. Yeah, Boog, plenty of power in that bat. And they'd love to give him a shot Five, here. Three. Hacks and misses. It's a strikeout. So the Astros lead one. They trail it here, 3-0. And we're back. Leading now the third baseman, down. Miguel Vargas. Miguel Vargas. The one two. Bows it back with two strikes. A one two. Two two. Deep drive down the line. Foul ball. The line and the pitch. Still two and two after the foul ball. Swinging. He's locked in at the plate when he's using the whole field. He was out in front there. Just needs to let the ball travel a little more, and his timing will be back on track. Good pitch for the strikeout. Dominic Fletcher steps to the plate for the White Sox. Swings and misses. And it's two and two. Well, they just threw that fastball by him, elevated. And if you're not looking up in that location, very difficult to catch up to, especially with that velocity. Got it by him for the K. I'm not sure that was the exact location the pitcher wanted, but it worked. He got the swing and miss. And I'm sure a bit of sigh of relief after seeing that one go through the zone. And he deals. And a ball evens the count. Tried to check his swing there. Now it appealed to first. And he went around. Not an easy call there, but that puts an end to the inning. Impeccable command in that one. Three batters, three strikeouts. That's electric stuff out there on the mound. And welcome back to the Ready ballpark. To the Ready to go. Bottom four. Here's a big power threat. Your Don Alvarez. Singing, you can't ask for anything more. This guy checks all the boxes offensively. He is the ultimate professional, and it doesn't just start at game time. It starts in the afternoon the way he prepares. Oh, this one high and deep. Way back there. of the year it's 3-1 he absolutely feasts on right-handed pitching and devours that one for a homer and you can see that's what he expects of himself at bat after at bat he's that confident just an excellent swing all the way around and it had that sound coming off the bat that gets everyone's attention got a pitch to drive short to the baseball squared it up and the bat's been carried it out of here So next up for Houston, Yainer Diaz. And a pitch. And another ball. Always exciting to see a leadoff home run in an inning. Kind of gets the offense fired up, and you start to expect a big inning.
the 2 1. On the ground, Lopez. On to first, Ow. and that's the first out. Nice recovery after giving up the homer. It's a good recovery, though, after giving up the home run. Not, not allowing shot. it to stay in the head, but going to work at the next hitter, and a tough one at that. Jeremy Pena up next for the Astros. One down, base is empty. The shortstop takes the ball. Two one. This one popped up. Foul ground, first base side. Puts it away for the out. Two down. Up next to the The first base. And next to hit for Houston, Zach Dezenzo. Two down, base is empty, but one run across. We're here in the bottom of the fourth. That missed by a lot. And the count is even two and two. Swing and a miss struck him out. Jordan Alvarez goes yard for Houston. And this is now a three one ball game. You're watching Major League Baseball on the show. Back here at Minute Maid Park, top five, John Shabby with Chris Singleton. And leading it off, Brooks Baldwin. The count two and one. Three ball. And that one, one upstairs. Strike. Activity in the bullpen for Houston. Fromber Valdez, the southpaw, is throwing and getting that sinker dialed in. Brown, a hard throwing right hander up as well. 3 1 now. And that's, that's ball four. Ball. Take your base. Boog, do you think you could draw a walk in the bigs if we gave you enough at bats? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think that if they gave the pitcher a full scouting report on me, yes, I think I could draw a walk. Wouldn't chase that time. Baldwin on at first. Nobody out. Runner on the goal. Pitch is high. Go to second. Wow, what an incredible throw right there. And he might not have had time to get to his feet and catch that runner. That's an incredible display of arm strength. Fouled off. He was late. Base is empty, one away, and we're at the top of the fifth. Oh, what a stop. Fires to first, and it beats him. What a play. Great cat-like reflexes right there. Lays out, knocks the ball down, and then fires with that rocket arm all the way across the diamond. Man, put this guy in the mouth. And now it's Luis Robert. Next offering in there for a strike. It's a ball and two strikes. Two down, nobody on. Line drive, caught. here in Houston. Here's the center fielder, Jake Myers. Here's a 1-1. One, one. And another ball. Movement in the bullpen. Jonathan Cannon up and throwing. Crochet also getting ready.
And a swing and a miss there. I think he was sitting off speed there. Two two now. That one missed. And the righty deals. Gets a piece and stays alive. Payoff pitch. Swings and misses. Struck him out. Very frustrating right there as a speedy potential base runner when with two strikes you just struggle to put the ball in play. You don't even have to get a hit at that point. You can help your team just by reaching on an error. But some way you got to find a way to shorten up the swing and put the ball in play next time. Here's Mauricio Dubon. Swings through that. One ball. Two strikes. One and two now. Line to left. And Benintendi able to make the grab. So two down now. And here is Chaz McCormick. And the slider catches the zone. And this guy's got a great feel for his breaking ball today. Hard on the ground to first. Takes it himself. And it's a 1-2-3 inning. So they make short work of him there. Five innings complete. It's the White Sox three and the Astros one. And from Valdez into the game. Pretty tight game, so they're looking for quality now, pitches out of him right here. Got to do his best to keep the score right where it is. Benintendi up here. The left hander, number 23, Andrew Benintendi. Left hand batter waits. That one finds the zone, and that's strike two. Activity in the Houston bullpen. Caleb Ferguson, the left-hander, is getting that big fastball of his ready to go. Ah. Swings through that one. It's a strikeout. Third time he struck out in this one, and definitely an individual performance you want to flush. He just hasn't looked very comfortable up there. Just one of those days. But when you're still winning the ball game, at least you can focus on doing your part to maintain that lead and getting that W. That's in there. And now it's three and two. Sharp grounder. That's through for a base hit. So a man aboard now with one away. Up next to the white side, the first baseman. So up next for yeah, Chicago, Gavin Sheets. At the belt and fires. That smash towards center. Myers snags it. The third baseman, Miguel Vargas. Miguel Vargas steps to the plate for the White Sox. Vaughn off of first with two away. Right through there for a strike. Popped up. Gets under it. He makes the grab. And that is that. No runs, one hit, no errors, and a man left. Top of the order due up in the home half of the six. It's the White Sox three and the Astros one. Back now for the bottom of the sixth, and there's a new pitcher on the mound, Jonathan Cannon. He pitched yesterday, and we'll now see him once again. 
number 48, Jonathan Cannon. So the Houston lineup turns over. Jose Altuve up to it here. Jose Altuve. Swing and a miss as he was out front that time. Goes down looking. Fastball inside just freezes the hitter. I don't think he was ready to pull the trigger. A lot of times hitters are looking away, and that one locked him up. Here's Alex Bregman. One down, base is empty. Off the plate. Pretty easy to give up on that pitch right there. Started on the edge of the plate with the spin. You know it's going to finish well off the plate. Righty delivers. Rewind. The White Sox leading by two here in the bottom of the sixth. And that one fouled off. Down the left field line, could be extra bases. Makes the turn and heads for second. The throw in, but he's in there oh, easily. Hey. Just a solid swing right there. Caught it out front and ripped it into the outfield for the base hit. Those always feel great. Now it's Jordan Alvarez. Man at second. And there's a ball. And the right-hander deals. That one is absolutely belted. Way back there. Long gone. Another homer. His second home run of the game. And we have a tie ball game. It's 3-3. Listen to these fans. This place is absolutely buzzing right now. You can feel the energy all the way up here in our broadcast booth. Knew what pitch he wanted to hit, spit on some other pitches in this at bat, was very patient, and it paid off. So it's all tied up thanks to the home run. Now the batter now, Yaner Diaz. Bounce to the left side. Sends it over to Sheets. That's the second out. The batter, number three, shortstop. And stepping in for the Astros, Jeremy Pena. Pena replaced the great Carlos Correa as the Astros starting shortstop, and he's proven to be more than capable at the big league level, Boog. Instant impact guy. He's the only positional player to be named World Series MVP as a rookie in the history of baseball. Spoils that one, and it remains two and two. Struck him out. Really fooled him with the breaking ball there. But two come across to score in the inning, courtesy of this two-run homer. We're tied now with three apiece. It's Major League Baseball, and it's on the show. Back here in Houston, and now it's going to be Dominic Fletcher. Dominic Fletcher. Good plate oh, appearance four. there. Able to take the walk. Leading off for the white side. The catcher. And now the catcher comes up to him. Laid off man is on. You've got to be looking for the bunt here. Try to get him in a scoring position. The pitch. No, Missed with a changeup. Ball two. If you're a base runner, you've got to stay dialed in here. Look for anything in the dirt. Try your best to get in the scoring position. And that one fouled off. 
With two strikes, may see some movement over there at first base, trying to stay out of the double play right here. 2-2 two -two on the way. Into center. As this one sized up, brings it in. The throw is wild, and it gets away. Next to hit, Brooks Baldwin. Definitely wants to stay out of the double play here. Ball on the ground in the infield. Should be an inning-ending double play. And here it comes. There's a strike. One away. Tie game. Go ahead, run. Stands at first. In the dirt, but kept close. No advance. Good job behind the dish. The tag and got him at second. Two outs. Line, and that's a base hit. Back to the top of the White Sox lineup. And up next for Chicago, Nicky Lopez. Here comes a pitch. That's outside. And it's two and one. Two gone. The possible go-ahead run at first. Close one doesn't get the call. Now three and one. Luis Robert in the on deck circle hoping to get a chance to make a big impact here. The three one too low That's ball four and he's walked another. Well that could be a big walk in this ball game moves the go ahead run into scoring position so some pressure pitches coming up in this next A.B. So digging in Luis Robert. It's been such a good hitter with runners in scoring position. Some guys just take it to another level. For him right now at the plate, it's like everyone else is in slow motion and he's in full speed. Two on, two outs. Three. One, two. That All one three. off the mark, two and two. Well, he might have to look for a different put-away pitch right here, 2-2. He's already seen the curveball a couple of times in this at bat, so might have it timed up and ready for it. Chases that one out of the zone. They miss a big chance to take the lead here late. He's in a tough spot, had to make a great pitch, did it, got the strikeout, gets out of the jam. Clearly, he's happy with those results. We're back in a new pitcher here to start the bottom of the seventh, Stephen Wilson. And he's had a really hard time throwing strikes so far this season. His walk rate is up there among the worst in the league for relievers. And stepping in for the Astros, Zach Dezenzo. The first baseman. Good eye right there. Two balls, one strike. That one three not one. close. And now three and one. First pitch strike from the pitcher, but then no panic at all by the hitter. Very patient, showing good discipline. Now he's in the driver's seat with a 3-1 count. And that's yeah. through there for a strike. And boy, okay. that was the pitch. 3-1, you want to be really aggressive on the fastball. Looking for the K. Well, definitely a borderline pitch right there, and he didn't look too convinced as he headed back to the dugout. You know, those are tough ones to let go as a hitter, but with the human umpire calling balls and strikes, it's always going to be on you to protect yourself with two strikes. Jake Myers will hit next. The pitch. Swing and a miss. Curveball in the dirt. Trying to keep good speed off the bases. Swing 
swings and misses on the fastball up in the zone for the strikeout. Very strong coming out of the pen so far as he punches out the first two batters he's faced in this one. Getting straight to work. Man, it's talked about a lot, but relievers are just so electric these days. He's not fun at bats if you're a hitter. I'm so glad I'm retired. So up next, Mauricio Dubon. Two down, nobody on. And a swing and a miss. And that's that. Astros go down one, two, three. Still tied, three and three. Welcome back and a new arm on the mound to start the eighth. Caleb Ferguson. Big swing and miss stuff right here, Boog. Averaging more than one strikeout per inning this season. So far, he's been pretty electric. That intending to start it. The left number 23, Andrew Benintendi. Cuts and misses. It's a strikeout. Save that mid-90s fastball until the final pitch of the at-bat. So at the plate, he hadn't really had a good opportunity to time things up. By the time the pitch was recognized and the swing came through the zone, the fastball was in the catcher's mitt. Andrew Vaughn now. One down, base is empty. Top of the zone for a strike. One and two. Kicks and deals. Line, and that's a base hit. That play looks routine defensively, but with all of the little nooks, it can get real tricky down in the corner. Kept it to a long single. Nice defensive play. Looks like we've got a substitution at first. Pinch running here. Corey Lee. One down. Now here is Gavin Sheets. The lefty ready and a one run. Hard ground ball for a base stop. And a go-ahead run into scoring position. One away. Two consecutive base hits for these guys here. Smash that one through the infield for the knock. When it's hit that hard, it makes it very tough on the infielders to make any sort of play. Had a huge opportunity now to grab the lead at this point in the game. Two on, one out. Stepping in, Miguel Vargas. The last thing he wants is to hit the ball on the ground, but I wouldn't expect many pitches up in the zone. They'll be pitching for a double play in this spot. And that one got a piece of him. He had two strikes on him, and he hit him. These types of mistakes usually turn out to be costly this late in the ball game. Things can really slip away in a hurry. With the go-ahead run at third, and we're in the top of the eighth. Ball. And that's in the dirt. The 2-1. And a swing and a miss. This guy's got such a good sinker. As a hitter, you've got to look up in the zone. If you look down, you're going to be chasing stuff in the dirt. This one is blasted. A no-doubter. Grand slam. His first homer of the year, and the White Sox jump out in front. It's 7-3. These fans are just heartbroken right now. Just an unbelievable turn of events here. I mean, they've been putting together solid at-bats all inning. They set the table for them. 
and he delivered big time to get him the lead. Huge momentum shift on that swing, and now we'll see if they can hold on. New now, pitcher now, Hunter Brown. And he's been really shutting down hitters from the right side of the plate this year. Not a lot of hard contact, not a lot of hits, period. Now it's the White Sox catcher. Right-hander kicks deals. That's the third. Bregman to first. Now they get the out. Now batter, the second baseman, Brooks Baldwin. And now it's the switch hitting second baseman, Brooks Baldwin. The wind of the pitch. Ball. And another ball. 2-1. Swing and a ground ball out to short. Throw sails over his head at first. Just kind of sailed that throw and pulled it across his body towards the right field side of first base. And usually that means the fielder just didn't square up his shoulders to the target. And I think that throw had just as much to do with his footwork as anything else. So the batting order turns over. And now the shortstop, Nicky Lopez. Two outs. Yep. Late that time, and it's strike two. Ah. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. That'll end the inning after a lot of scoring. A grand slam for the White Sox. It's now a four-run lead at 7-3. It's Major League Baseball on the show. Now into the game, Corey Jolts. He takes over and right. Number 30. And stepping in for the Astros, Chaz McCormick. The Astros in striking distance, but have some work to do. Boog, it starts with the leadoff, man. I need a good at bat out of him right here. Next pitch misses way outside. This is a very important inning here. After scoring all those runs, you want your pitcher to come out and just mow them down. The offense has worked hard. It's shut down inning time. Way out front for strike two. Two-two. The punch out there, one away. Well, I'd say he pretty much had to offer it that one. You don't want to leave it in the umpire's hands. Even though it ended up outside the zone, it still was close enough to where it looked like it could drop down right on that corner and get the call. Last thing you want to do is get punched out by the umpire knowing you could have at least fouled the pitch off and kept the at-bat going. And he deals. So a foul ball makes it one and two. The White Sox leading by four here the bottom half of the eighth inning. Swings and misses. Had him out front for strike three. Well, right now he's in cruise control, autopilot, just dominating these hitters. He doesn't look like it's a fun at bat. And all of a sudden, you become in awe of this guy on the mound. Somebody's got to break this thing up. That's five straight strikeouts. Got to put a ball in play. Swings through that one. A lot of times you'll see a pitcher maybe double up on a pitch. This guy will throw it three times, four times in a row because hitters just can't lay off of it. Line drive. No trouble here. Puts it away for the out. And that'll do it. One, two, three, go the Astros. They're down four. It's seven to three. And we're back. All set to start the ninth in this one. And now, Luis Robert. Robert. And a pitch. 
And another ball. And that one is in for a strike. Swing and a miss. Struck him out. And he's gone for the fourth time tonight. Well, that high four-seam fastball has become such a great pitch for pitchers to finish hitters off. They're trying to stay back with two strikes, make sure that they can handle something off speed, and just with good spin rate, good rotation through the zone, elevate it a little bit, get a lot of swings and misses, and that's a really nice job right there. That's ripped. Base hit. So they get a man aboard with a one out single. Here's Corey Lee. Here's a one one. Just off the inside edge. Two one. And a 2 1 on the way. Swings through that one out in front that time. They can live up in the zone all game if hitters will chase it. That's just too much velocity. Hitters got to look down in the zone. The 2 2. Full count. In the dirt. And the runner holds. Benintendi over at first with one away. The pitch keeps the at-bat going with a foul ball. The pitch swings through it and that's a strikeout. That cutter right there had just enough movement on it to get the swing and miss. It wasn't a great location by any means. That's typically a spot that hitters can handle. So I'd say he fooled him with just enough of that late action. Man at first. And now the first baseman, Gavin Sheets. So a foul ball makes it one and two. Two outs. Popped up. Bregman settles under it. He's got it. And that is out number three. The White Sox leave one, but they lead it by four. It's 7 3. Back now as they hand the ball to a fresh arm to start the bottom of the ninth. Number 60. Well, he's been hit pretty hard at times this season, as you see with the big ERA. So this is an important outing for him to get on the right track. Here's Jordan Alvarez looking for his third home run of the game. Yeah, he blasted his second of the game in the sixth inning. Scott looks like he's playing on beginner mode in this one. Beginner mode is where it's at, Chris. pitch late with the swing there love to see it power versus power right there and a one two again that's a little bit low and that's awfully close I don't know how you take that he's seeing the ball out of the pitcher's hand really well right now Spoils the two strike pitch and he'll see another. And okay. another ball. If you're in the mound right now, you know you have.